Good morning, everyone. Um, are you excited? Okay, cool. So let's get into today. It's actually a lot of flashcards, which we're really very good at. It allows us to kind of go through quite quickly. Uh, we score well. And it's just been a really, really successful version of studying for us thus far. I do believe we also have one um, hands-on uh, uh, challenge. And we also have a video for that as well. So if we get a little lost, we have a video where um, it's already done for us. So it'll be, it'll be good. Today will be a really good day. The last two days have been a bit challenging, um, but today we should just be, so let's just get into it, right? All right, so let's go ahead and move this lower, hide floating menu, we could get out of Zoom. All right, so go to your Salesforce, go to each component, get to Salesforce Designer, and where we are currently, um, what we're up to is you'll see systems design with the lightning design system. Say that five times fast. And you'll see that we have our flashcards ready. System design with lightning design system. Get started with lightning design. Get started with, with systems design. Is that different? Hold on a sec. Um, just make sure, get started with systems design. What's the one after that? Apply systems design principles, apply systems design. Yeah, so maybe I just messed up on one board. As long as we know that we're in the right place, we're good to go. Um, and let's get going. So get started with systems design. What is the main focus of systems design? The main focus of systems design is designing and combining elements that interact to achieve a common goal. What is the Salesforce Lightning Design System, SLDS? The Salesforce Lightning Design System, SLDS, is a unique design system that involves designing and combining elements that interact to achieve a common goal. What is the relationship between individual elements and the overall user experience in systems design? In systems design, the relationship between individual elements and the overall user experience is essential as focusing on these relationships allow for creating compelling user experiences. What is user-centered design? Hold on one second. User-centered design is an ISO standard that focuses on creating a user experience that is tailored to the user and is introduced in 1986. What are the two activities that are necessary for creating a fantastic user experience? The two activities necessary for creating a fantastic user experience are considering the pattern, micro and macro, that people learn through widely accepted UX, which is always user experience best practices, and unique patterns in your application and ensuring that users can accomplish a discrete task on a single page or in a single feature. What is the goal of systems design? The goal of systems design is to design systems that satisfy users' needs as specified in the system requirements. What is the purpose of focusing on scalability when designing a user experience? Focusing on scalability when designing a user experience allows for reusable elements that benefit designers and users, as they can design experiences efficiently by reusing existing interaction patterns and users can learn a new interface quickly because they recognize its elements. What are the benefits of system design? The benefits of system design include scalability, efficiency for designers and developers, and recognition of users. What is the foundation of systems design? The foundation of systems design is recognizing that the relationship between elements are more important than the individual elements. What is user experience? User experience is a focus area of design that Don Norman coined, and it involves creating a user experience as tailored to the user. All right, let's answer some questions. Okay, what aspect of systems design allows you to build for multiple uses, viewpoints, and structures? Accessibility, durability, scalability, or clarity? The answer is scalability. In systems design, the most important relationship is the one between which two entities? system requirements and user requirements, individual elements and overall user experience, 
user-centered thinking and user user-centered design <laughs> micro patterns and macro patterns i believe user-centered thinking and user-centered design you know of course that would be the wrong answer now here's the thing Micro patterns and macro patterns, we had read that system requirements and user requirements, individual elements and the overall user experience. I'm thinking overall user experience. Okay. Um, that was one of those things where the answer was kind of in the question and we should have paid attention better to that. Okay. Apply systems design principles. What is an affordance? An affordance is a part of an element that people recognize and associate with the actions they can take. What is the goal when designing a button for a design system? The goal when designing a button for a design system is to understand the types of actions that require that require required across all areas of Salesforce and to consider the needs of users outside the context of what is being designed for. What is the best way to design a button for a design system? The best way to design a button for a design system is to consider the big picture, the hierarchy of the user needs and the context in which the button will be used. What is the purpose of using existing elements when designing for a design system? The purpose of using existing elements when designing for a design system is to fully grasp the bigger picture and make informed decisions. What is the importance of feedback when it comes to design? Feedback is important when it comes to design because it helps to evolve existing patterns and identify the need for new patterns. What is the purpose of recognizing the connection between the function, structure, and visual design of a button? The purpose of recognizing the connection between the function, structure, and visual design of a button is to enable users to expect similar buttons to behave in a similar way. What is the importance of observing how elements are used when it comes to design? Observing how elements are used when it comes to design is important because it helps to identify the need for new patterns. What is the goal of considering a wide variety of use cases when it comes to designing a button? The goal of considering a wide variety of use cases when it comes to designing a button is to bring clarity to the design and to understand the types, states, and variants the button needs. What is the importance of repeatable habits when it comes to design? Repeatable habits are important when it comes to design because they become mental shortcuts for users, allowing them to be more efficient when using an application. What is the purpose of testing a design against each identified use case? The purpose of testing a design against each identified use case is to validate design decisions. All right, let's go into some questions. Which of the following is an example of affordance in terms of helping the user? Contribution process, design specifications, recognition, budgeting, technology cost. So I don't think we went over this. Which of the following is an example of affordance? All right, so let's go find affordance. I was looking for affordance. Okay. Affordance are parts of an element that people recognize and associate with the actions they take. In application settings are often represented by a gear and email is represented by an envelope. Neither settings nor email actually require gears or envelopes, but the characteristics of those icons imply the functionality in use. When affordances are taken advantage of, the user knows what to do just, okay. All right, so which of the following is an example of affordance in helping in terms of helping the user? Design specifications or recognition? Recognition. When considering how a button relates to the rest of an established design system, what must you consider? Hierarchy, color palette, macro, and micro patterns, geometric shapes. When considering how a button relates to the rest of the established design system, say hierarchy or no design huh mm. 
Home point buttons are the rest of the design system. Since the button was added, blah, 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 blah. Create a new button element when designing a button. For design system, first goal is to understand the types of actions required across Salesforce. If you design a button to one section, similar. Okay. Um, say geometric shapes. Of course not. Color palette. Of course not. Hierarchy. <laughs> I, I really feel like, well, A, we chose hierarchy in the beginning, but then changed it, which is always a bad idea. But a lot of them was real ambiguous. All right, let's just continue. What is a macro interaction? Macro interactions are higher level tasks and workflows to complete them. What are macro micro interactions? Micro interactions are individual lower level interactions and affordances. What is a macro pattern? A macro pattern is a repeatable solution that fits multiple record types and represents a high level interaction. What are micro patterns? Micro patterns are individual interactions that have a large impact across an application. What is the first step in identifying a design pattern? The first step in identifying a design pattern is to think about the application you're designing for and search for a pattern that meets your needs. What is the impact of a design decision that deviates from commonly accepted norms? The impact of a design decision that deviates from commonly accepted norms can be significant as it can confuse users and slow them down. What is the goal of systems design? The goal of systems design is to create and identify patterns so people can quickly accomplish their goals. What did Steve Jobs say about saving time with macro and micro decisions? Steve Jobs said, if you don't, if you make it boot 10 seconds faster, you've saved a dozen lives. That's really worth it, don't you think? What is the downstream effect of uh, unsystematic design decisions? The downstream effect of unsystematic design decisions is users being confused and distressed by which button they need to push. What is the best approach to both macro and micro design decisions? The best approach to both macro and micro design decisions is to look for design patterns and employ design principles. All right, let's see if we can do a little bit better on this one. What is an example of a macro pattern? Clicking next, creating a record, making a button, calculating user experience debt. I actually don't know. Let's consider a familiar example in Salesforce, creating a record. At a macro level, these are three places to create a record in Salesforce. So creating a record. Okay. True or false, the first thing to do when deciding which pattern to use in the Lightning UI is to search the web for patterns designed for similar apps or systems. I would say true, but since we're um, since we're having so much success just looking it up, Okay, let's go to the next flashcards. Document design guidelines and specifications. What is the most common interaction state? Default. When should you document design specifications? After completing a design, when you are ready to hand off the design to an engineering partner. What are do's and don'ts? Do's and don'ts are an effective way to communicate rules and provide an example of what to do beside an example of what not to do to help readers absorb rules quickly. What are the six most common interaction states? Default, focus, hover, disabled, pressed, active. 
What are design specifications? Design specifications document the size, color, typography, and interaction values of a design so that the engineer can use those values in the code. What is an interaction specification? An interaction specification provides the values inputted when a user uses the elements you are designing. How can users interact with your design? They may be a keyboard user and tab over to your element, a mouse user and move the cursor to your design, or a touchscreen device user and tap the element with their fingers. What is the purpose of Web Content Accessibility Guideline, WCAG? The purpose is to make the web content more accessible to all people. What are design pattern guidelines? Design pattern guidelines describe the usage of macro workflows and micro interactive elements such as buttons and inputs. What are foundation guidelines? Foundation guidelines define the visual style of an app, including details such as layout, typography, color, illustration, icon, iconography, kinetics, and branding. Okay, let's go into some questions. Which two interaction states are most similar? Focus and default, pressed and active, hover and focus, default and pressed. I don't like pressed being two different ones and default for that matter. Actually, all of them. So I'm going to go hover and focus. True or false, web accessibility guidelines permit the use of color alone to convey information. Um, design specification document size, color, and typography interactions of the engineer can use values in the code design spec for app describes elements such as color values, the interactions defined. That's not what I'm looking for. Information conveyed with color through another visual means ensures that who cannot see color can still perceive. Right, color change and oh, tells us to make sure states are never indicated by color alone. So false. All right, we got a hundred. Congratulations. We finally we were getting our butt kicked a little bit, but uh, we did it, which is good. Remember, it's it's not about getting your butt kicked, it's about getting back up. Just keep going. And look, we just accomplished 400 points, four different, like we are as undesirable as it seemed that that was, we just did a really, really great job. Okay. Okay, so, all right, apparently it just wants to stay on the screen. All right, so let's go back to what is next. So let's go to Lightning Experience Productivity. Elevate your design productivity. Lightning Experience Productivity. Elevate your design productivity. Next. What is the Global Actions Menu? The Global Actions Menu is a menu located in the Lightning Experience header that allows users to quickly create records without an automatic relationship to other records or the current page. What is the Utility Bar? The utility bar is a fixed footer located at the bottom of the screen in the Lightning Experience that allows users to quickly access handy utilities and common productivity tools such as notes, quip, a flow launcher, telephony feature, and custom options. What is the Salesforce Classic homepage? The Salesforce Classic homepage is the trusted Salesforce Classic user interface that typically greets users upon logging into Salesforce and includes features such as recently viewed records and upcoming tasks. What is the Lightning Experience homepage? The Lightning Experience homepage is the redesigned Salesforce user interface homepage that includes features such as performance chart, assistant, news, calendar, recent records, and top deals. What is the shortcut for editing a record? The shortcut for editing a record is E. What is the shortcut for opening or closing macro utilities? The shortcut for opening and closing macros utilities is M. What is the shortcut for inserting quick text? 
The shortcut for inserting quick text is Windows Control Plus and Mac uh, CMD Plus. What is the shortcut for posting to feed? The shortcut for posting to feed is Windows Control Plus Enter and Mac Command Plus Enter. What is the shortcut for saving a record? The shortcut for saving a record in Windows is Control S and Mac Command S. What is the shortcut for focusing the notification panel? The shortcut for focusing the notification panel is C. All right, let's answer some questions. Okay. While you're editing an opportunity, a colleague calls with some information that you need for an upcoming presentation to your manager. What's the best way to create a note to save the details for later? Send a note to yourself in email. Quickly save the changes to your opportunity, then switch to notes homepage. Continue editing the opportunity while you select a new note from the global actions menu. Save the changes to your opportunity, then select new notes from action global menu. So I'm going to go continue editing the opportunity while you select new note from global actions menu. A, I believe we just learned that to be the answer, but B, if you were studying just how to take a test, it is the simplest answer. It's the only one that allows you to continue what you're doing while simultaneously doing something else. And in a company like Salesforce, they're not going to allow an answer to be a better answer than what they actually do in real life. Like, for instance, I don't think Honda would ever ask you what is the fastest car and then put in the answers Lamborghini because that would tell the user, hey, what are you doing here? There's a better way and they don't even know how to do it. And everyone loves Honda, but they're not known to be the fastest. So that's not a shot at Honda. On the redesigned Lightning Experience homepage, what can you use the assistant to do? Keep track of closed and, like, and likely to close opportunities for the current quarter. See opportunities with no activity in 30 days. Place an outline order for more coffee beans for the coffee for the office kitchen. Schedule meetings with customers, A and E. Okay, I mean A and C is E. Keep track of closed and likely to close opportunities for the current quarter, yes. Now we gotta wonder, is C an answer? Place an online order for more coffee beans for the office kitchen. On the redesigned Lightning Experience homepage, what can, the, what can you use the assistant to do? Um, schedule meetings with customers. I really, I, I know A is an answer, but I, I don't know if, can you order online for coffee beans? Um, Let's go look it up. The assistant shows you things that you need to address, including leads assigned to you today, opportunities with overdue tasks, opportunities with no activity in 30 days, opportunities with no open activity, overdue opportunities. Um, wow. Hold on. Yes, yeah, so actually we were wrong. It's, it's B. What can you use keyboard shortcuts and lightning experience to do? Select an item from the navigation bar, get help, open the app launcher, select a filter on files home, initiate a search. I believe initiate a search. No, select an item from the navigation bar. Let's see. Um, okay, keyboard shortcuts to speed up common task. Close or deselect a window, edit, insert quick tasks, um, open or close macros, open or close notes, post to feed, save, save a record, search, show shortcut menus, navigation. So these are all different things from What can you use? Oh, you can initiate a search. What can you use keyboard shortcuts and lightning experiences to do? All right, initiate a search. All right. And I'm going to have a sip of water real quick. <clears throat> All 
And let's get back into it. Work with notes and files. What feature in Salesforce Lightning Experience allows you to take better notes faster? Enhanced notes. What is the notes and attachments related list in Salesforce Classic used for? For creating and accessing notes. How can you upload files to Salesforce files in Lightning Experience? By dragging and dropping the file onto the files related list card on the record. What is the files homepage and Lightning Experience used for? It is a hub for accessing and managing all of the files you have permissions to see. What is the purpose of a library in Salesforce files? To organize content and to share content with colleagues. How can you attach files from Salesforce files to records? By clicking add files in the files related list. How can you share a file with people outside of your company? By generating a public link to the file. What are the two options for attaching files to a record using the files related list? Uploading the file from your computer or attaching files from Salesforce files. What are viewers and collaborators in Salesforce files? Viewers can view, download, and reshare the shared file. Collaborators can do all that plus change file permissions, edit the file, and upload new versions. What is the purpose of content deliveries in Salesforce Classic? To allow users to share large files with people outside of their organization. All right, let's take some, let's take a test. Which of these can you do when editing an enhanced note in Lightning Experience? Apply bold and italic formatting to text, add images, relate the note to multiple records, add it to the notes and add it to the notes and attachments related list? No, but you can do A, B, and C, and E is A, B, and C. Okay, two, how do you attach a file to a record in Lightning Experience? Drag the file from your computer to the files related list card on the record. Email the file to your admin so they can attach it to the record. Right click the file and select open file with lightning experience on the files home. Open the pull down menu for the file. Then that all sounds annoying. It's a just drag it. Again, if an answer sounds annoying and it's for a company like Salesforce, I can promise you somebody over there figured a better way. All right. What type of email templates are available in Lightning Experience? Lightning templates, including templates you can create an email template builder with rich text supports an easy file preview and sharing. What feature makes it easy to see what activities have already been completed and what is upcoming in Lightning Experience? The Activity Timeline, which is an Activity Master Control Center for everything related to the record you're on. How can you view the details of an activity in the activity timeline? Expand the activity row and click the expand button next to the left of the activity or click expand all to see the details for all the activities. How can you access your cl existing classic text, custom HTML and letterhead email templates in Lightning Experience? Select all classic templates from the dropdown list when selecting a template. How can you update tasks from the activity timeline? Click the drop down arrow and editing options appear, or click the checkbox to mark it complete. What is the purpose of the list email feature in Lightning Experience? To send email to a group of contacts and leads from a saved list view. What can you do with the calendar tab in Lightning Experience? Easily access your schedule. Create events quickly, share your calendar, and view other calendars. What are the two places from which you can send email in Lightning Experience? The Activity Composer on a record and the Global Actions menu. What is the purpose of the filters and settings in the Activity Timeline? To narrow your search and to find the key details quickly. What features make it easy to keep your email templates up to date? Lightning templates, which is available in Lightning Experience with easy file preview and sharing. All right, let's go into some questions. Which activities can you view in the activity timeline? Past activities, future activities, draft activities, A and B or A, B and C. 
I don't think you could view draft activity. I don't think that's an actual thing, but let's just see if it comes up. Yeah, it's not even, I think they just made that word up. Which actions can you complete on the task homepage? Edit existing task, create new task, mark task as complete, sort task by due date. Which actions can you complete on the task homepage? Um, I think it's A, B, and C. I don't think you could, I think they're already sorted by due date. Three, as a standard non-admin user, which other calendars can you see on your calendar? As a standard non-admin user, which other calendars can you see on your calendar? All calendars for users in your org, any calendar has been shared with you in your org, calendars for anyone below you in the management hierarchy, that will never be an actual, well, maybe it would be, calendars for all customer contacts in your org. As a standard non-admin user, which other calendars can you see in your on your calendar? All calendars for users in your org? I don't think that would be the answer. Any calendar that's been shared with you? Yes. Calendars for anyone below? I'm going to go B. I know this kind of wants me to do A, C, or E, which is A and C, but I don't know. What are two options for creating and sending emails in Lightning Experience? From the home page and global actions menu, from the activity composer on a, on a record and global actions menu, from the task list on the records action menu, from the calendars and the home page, from the home page and the task list. No, we just read it, uh, activity composer. How cool is that, that we knew that was B? That is awesome. All right. Let's continue. Find stuff with search. What feature is the most used in Salesforce? Search. What types of results appear in the global search dropdown menu in Lightning Experience? Instant results, full search results, suggested re records. What is a tip to quickly find specific object in the global search dropdown menu in Lightning Experience? Start typing the name of the object or scroll through the list to find what you're looking for. What are some enhancements to refining search results in Lightning Experience? Adjusting column widths, clipping or wrapping text, filtering search results, seeing a note when search results include spelling corrections, and easily seeing how search results are sorted. What is the purpose of lookups in Salesforce Classic? To associate records in Salesforce Classic. What are the features of lookups in Lightning Experience? Instant results, full search results, sorting full search results by relevance, search features like spelling correction and searching all searchable fields. What objects can you filter search results for in a Lightning Experience? Accounts, cases, contacts, dashboards, files, knowledge articles, leads, notes, opportunities, people, tasks, and custom objects. What is the purpose of global search in Lightning Experience? To get to records faster and save time. What is the difference between the search results page for Salesforce Classic and Lightning Experience? In Lightning Experience, filter options are in the pane on the left to give you search results some breathing room. You can adjust column widths and clip or wrap text, and you can easily see how search results are sorted. What are the five recent items in the global search dropdown menu in Lightning Experience? Recent searches, items from your most frequently used objects, and items from your current object. All right, let's answer some questions. How can you see recent items in Lightning Experience instant results? Enter a search term in the global search box, Click into the global search box, go to favorites and search results, expand a pane on the left side. I think it's if you just click into the box, right? That's what they had just shared with us. I'm pretty sure that's what I just read. What are the five recent items in the global search dropdown menu in Lightning Experience? So wait, what is that? The global search drop down menu. So I think we just click into the global search box. Okay. 
What can you, how can you refine search results in accounts and files in Lightning Experience? Apply filters to all searchable objects, sort account and file search results, type limit search to in the global search box, sort search results and filter results for accounts and files. How can you refine search results for accounts and files in Lightning Experience? Apply filters. Okay. Type limit search to, okay. <laughs> so the two answers we clicked was filter and the next one was sort, but we did not see that D was filter and sort. So when the first one was wrong, we were quite confused when for our second choice, when that one was wrong, then we realized there's one that actually had both of them in it. Um, so it's always a good thing to read all of the answers fully. Okay, and I believe this next section is going to be the one with hands on, but we still have questions or we still made note cards for it. What is the primary benefit of using the chatter publisher in lightning experience? It provides all the style controls from Salesforce classic plus additional controls for adding an inline image and a hyperlink inserting code snippets selecting an emoji and mentioning a person or group. What is the difference between sharing in Salesforce Classic and Lightning Experience? In Salesforce Classic, a shared post is a copy of the original. In Lightning Experience, a shared post is more like a window on the original. So if the original post is edited, the shared version also shows the update. What are the features of a Lightning Experience group? Live feeds, seen by capabilities, post pinning, a rich visual experience, the ability to add a banner image, and group actions like polls, questions, and announcements. What is the minimum size for an image used for a group banner in Lightning Experience? 1280 by 300. How do you add feeds to a stream in Lightning Experience? Navigate to Streams homepage, select the edit action on Stream Row, or click the stream name to navigate to it and then click the edit button. In the edit stream window, go to records to follow and select the type of feed to add. In the same field, search for the specific feed and click a, click a result to add it to the stream. What is the maximum number of streams you can have in Lightning Experience? 100. How do you copy a link to a post in Lightning Experience? From a post share menu, select copy link, then click copy link. The link is placed on your clipboard, so you can then post it anywhere. What is the maximum number of feeds you can add to a stream in Lightning Experience? 25. How do you delete a stream in Lightning Experience? Navigate to the stream and click its delete button, or go to the stream's homepage and select delete from the actions menu on the stream row. How do you enable the scene by feature in a private or unlisted group in Lightning Experience. As a group manager or owner, you can enable the scene by capability in the group. And I believe we're gonna do a little bit of hands-on, so let's do that. So let's launch this baby. Okay, add an image to chatter posts. Now for a little fun, post something to chatter and include an inline, can you stop? and post an inline image in your post. Remember, post to chatter feed in your Trailhead Playground, not your company Salesforce org. Before you start for this challenge, you need an image no larger than 800 by 800 in your device. Create a chatter post, add an inline image to the post. Welcome, Anthony. Um, okay, so let's actually watch this. Where do we do that? Actually, that music is atrocious. Okay. Okay, now we're in chatter.
All right, let's go put an image in here. We can just use the logo that we had once before. Let's go to share. And I think that might be it, right? So creating a post, add an inline image to the post, and that should be it. Let me just make sure they didn't do anything super special that we don't know of. Okay. So we should be able to then, let's minimize this. Is there anything we have to save? I don't see. All right, let's check the challenge. <clears throat> Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll put, we could X out of this. We don't need it any longer. And we could continue with our questions. What tabs are present in Lightning Experience for reports and dashboards? Reports and dashboards. What are the differences between reports and dashboards tab and Lightning Experience in Salesforce Classic? In Salesforce Classic, when you visit the Reports tab, you see a list of both reports and dashboards. From here, you can create, find, view, edit, or delete any report or dashboard. When you visit the Dashboards tab, you automatically view the last dashboard you worked with and no list view is available. In Lightning Experience, when you visit the Reports tab, you see a list of your recent reports. When you visit the Dashboards tab, you see a list of your recent dashboards. What are the unique properties of a Lightning Experience dashboard? Unique to Lightning Experience, you can customize the dashboard theme and chart colors, add up to 50 filter values, add up to 10 columns, 200 rows to a Lightning table, show chatter photos, and add conditional highlighting. What is the maximum number of filters allowed in a Lightning Experience dashboard? Up to 50. How can you print a report created in Lightning Experience? Use your browser's print function or export the formatted report by clicking the action menu drop down icon, then selecting export, formatted report, export. The report downloads as an XLSV file, open the file and then print it. What are the filters available when building or editing a report in Lightning Experience but not shown in the filter panel when reviewing your report? Row limit filters, historical field filters, cross filters, and standard filters. What do you what do you click to add a component to the dashboard in Lightning Experience? Answer plus component. What new dashboard component is available only in Lightning Experience? Lightning tables. How can you view a dashboard as someone else in Lightning Experience? If the dashboard builder configured the dashboard to display as a dashboard viewer and allowed viewers, that is you, to change whom the view the dashboard has, then you can do just that. Click change to see the dashboard as someone else. How can you view your team loop? How can you keep your team looped in with feeds and subscriptions in Lightning Experience? Reports and dashboards features their own feeds, which can be opened by clicking the collaborate button. You can also post a component snapshot to the feed from the dashboard and set up subscriptions to refresh reports and dashboards and automatically email them on a schedule. All right, let's answer some questions. Okay. Which of these features are only available in Lightning Experience? The Lightning Table Dashboard component. I really thought it was only one thing, expanded dashboard components, 12 columns, they're gonna stick with that. What can you do while viewing a report on the report run page in Lightning Experience? Add a report filters when opening the report builder, make french fries, add or remove report columns, group or ungroup records, E, A, and C. Uh, so A is edit report filters without opening the report builder. Can you do that? on the report run page. I'm thinking, actually, I think you can. So we're gonna go A and C, which is E. What is the best way to ask a question about a dashboard component? Email your question to a colleague, raise your question at the next team meeting, 
because face-to-face -face communication is always best. Post a component snapshot to the dashboard feed, ask your question and mention your colleagues. Send the question to your colleagues via text message. Emailing your colleagues and sending them text messages is not something a company would say, hey, listen, we don't have a solution, so this is what you need to do, especially when C is a really good solution. Um, okay, A and uh, one and two we got incorrect. So we know B is an answer. Um, so it must be B, C, and D. What can you do while viewing a report on the report? Um, Megan French tries is not it. Group or ungroup records, add or remove report column. I think it's add or remove report columns. <sighs> All right, it's A by itself. All right, let's tell the world, hey, listen, look at us. Okay, and we'll do this on Twitter as well. Now, we've really been breezing through, so I want to go ahead and Go to the next chapter as well. So user engagement, right? So I have the note cards for this, but I have to upload them. All right, so let's go UE. Where are they? Oh, I know where they are. All right, so let's go ahead and import them. And let's get started. Why are you telling me there's 10 cards in this set? Am I, am I missing something? Did I not clearly upload more than 10? See this 44. So let's import that data. Okay, let's create this set because we have 44. Okay, so getting started with user engagement. What is user engagement? User engagement is the process of onboarding, empowering, assisting, and educating users through an in app guidance. What are the four key scenarios for user engagement? Onboarding, feature discovery and adoption, troubleshooting help, and deeper learning. What components are available for Salesforce user engagement? Welcome mat, guidance center, prompts, uh, popovers, empty state, field level help, setup assistant, and walkthrough. What is the push method? The push method is when users may not notice or seek out help, but would benefit from assistance. Content is presented to the user, even though they don't seek it out. What is the pull method? The pull method is when the user is motivated to seek help. This is where the guidance center shines because it's always sitting, waiting to spring open and help users when they need it. What are some additional features, options, and components for the user engagement? Utility bar notes, rich text component, guidance for success on path, custom notifications from a process, and Einstein analytics in dashboard videos. What is the goal of user engagement? 
The goal of user engagement is to provide users with the skills and information they need to get as much value as possible out of the product or application. <laughs> what is the main purpose of prompts? The main purpose of prompts is to provide just-in-time prompts that help users learn by doing. By doing. It, of, it also offers reliable resources and access to support. What is the main purpose of field-level help? The main purpose of field-level help is to detail the purpose and function of a standard or custom field. What is the main purpose of the welcome mat? The main purpose of the welcome mat is to provide getting started resources for the first time that user, for the first time users log into the Lightning experience. All right, let's answer some questions. What are the four key user engagement scenarios? Onboarding help, troubleshooting questions, onboarding, feature discovery and adop adoption, troubleshooting help, deeper learning, welcome mat, prompts, tool tips. Three is only three, uh, is only, uh, C is only three, so that's definitely not it. D, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. And E, in-app guidance, on-demand trading, in-person training, and videos. So the art of user engagement scenarios. These are the four scenarios we're going to, after getting exhibits, pick it. All right, so why don't you just give them to me. So you know, onboarding, feature discovery, troubleshooting help, and deeper learning. What components can you use for onboarding? Welcome mat, field level help, prompts and popovers, A and B, A and C. So we know A is there, welcome mat, uh, field level help, or prompts and popovers. I think field level help is the answer. Um, but let's double check. Prompts and popovers was the correct answer. Okay, promote feature adoption and discovery. What are the three types of prompts? Floating, targeted, and docked. What type of prompt is best for driving users to a resource? Floating or targeted? What type of prompt stays in place as a user navigates through an app? Docked. When is a prompt the right type of in-app guidance for a scenario? When you have something short and helpful to say, or when you want to quickly call attention to something new, interesting, or important. What, what are the benefits of a walkthrough? Unique hands-on learning encourages users to take the time to complete all steps and provides a step-by-step -step guided experience across a single or multiple pages for in-context learning. What type of prompt has all the benefits of a floating prompt without being confined to nine placement positions? Targeted. What type of prompt is great when users need to refer to content while exploring a feature on their own? Docked. What are the good candidates for prompts and walkthroughs? Features that are easy to learn and use immediately. Features that are available without setup or personalization. Features that are requested enhancements to existing functionality. Reminders or simple instructions to onboard to features that have low adoption and tips for being productive in the app. What type of in-app guidance is useful for onboarding, feature adoption and discovery, and deeper learning scenarios? Prompts and walkthroughs. What type of report can you create to view usage metrics for a prompt? A custom report type using the prompt actions object. All right, let's answer some questions. What, why would you add prompts? A new feature is enabled. Users aren't taking advantage of valuable feature. Users frequently leave task incomplete. A and B or B and C. So B is 60% and we know C to be the answer. So we'll go B and C. What are the benefits of a docked prompt? It stays put while users navigate around. It has a dismiss button. It can display ebbed GIF images. Its prompt isn't intrusive. You can place it in one of six positions. And first of all, it's one of nine and it does stay, um, it stays put. <sighs> okay. 
Okay, so number one is D, A, and B. We thought it was E, B, and C, and then we switched our answer, and um, we did not do well. Okay, let's continue. Enable users to learn in the flow of work. What is learning paths? Learning paths are a customizable way for companies to equip their employees with just-in-time personalized learning in the flow of work. Where can learning paths be found? Learning paths can be found in the Guidance Center panel in the Salesforce Global Header. How can learning paths be customized? Learning paths can be customized by adding trailhead modules, linking out to resources such as wiki or video, assigning content to the entire organization or specific users and teams, or on the pages they interact with most. What are some examples of resources that can be added to learning paths? Examples of resources that can be added to learning paths are onboarding for users just starting out, troubleshooting for more experienced users, a wiki, video, price sheet, product list, company dictionary or glossary, and a trailhead trail mix. What is the recommended time to complete learning paths? The recommended time to complete learning paths is under a half hour. What are some tips for selecting learning items for users? Some tips for selecting learning, hold on one second. Ah, excuse me. Some tips for learning items for users are choose shorter resources to keep the learning bite size assign only one or two contextual learning items per page, use due dates to give users an idea of when to complete the learning, and make help and troubleshooting content accessible, clear, and empathetic. When do required and contextual learning assignments appear in the Guidance Center panel? Required and contextual learning assignments appear in the Guidance Center panel when they're assigned to a user or team. How can Trailhead Playground be launched? A Trailhead Playground can be launched by making sure you're logged into Trailhead, clicking your user avatar in the upper right corner of the page, and selecting hands-on orgs from the dropdown, and clicking launch next to the org you want to open, or if you want to create a new playground, click create playground. What is the learning path icon located between in the global header? The learning path icon is located between the global actions and help menu icons in the global header. Where can the option to assign learning content be found? The option to assign learning content can be found by clicking the icon for Guidance Center in the global header, then clicking the Assign Learning Content option at the bottom of the panel. All right, let's answer some questions. Why would you add learning resources inside the Salesforce app? To add contextual help for each page in the app, to contact Salesforce support, to link your company's onboarding resources, to add resources about working in Salesforce Classic, E, A, and C. What can you customize when creating a learning item? Assignment, location, rating, A and B, A and C. So we know A is the answer. It's just a matter of if B and or C is the answer. What can you customize when creating a learning item? Assignment, location, rating, A and C is E but it's really just A, but it's really D, A, and B. How am I? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, last one. What is the ultimate goal for any piece of guidance when it comes to user agreement? To deliver an aha moment. What are the four phases of a user engagement journey? Onboarding, feature adoption and discovery, help in troubleshooting, deeper learning. What is the acronym MAP used for when it comes to crafting a user engagement journey? Message, audience, purpose. What are the four principles for effective user engagement content? Friendly, accurate, concise, and educational. What is the goal of a call to action at the end of a user engagement message? To prompt the user to do something or acknowledge that they have read the message. I'm oh, sorry. What is an example of a floating prompt? A floating prompt that reads, get on the path to success, Explore how the path and, and the Kanban view can help you track, manage, and update your records. There are two buttons, OK, and learn how. 
What is an example of a welcome map? A welcome map for users the first time they land in Lightning Experience. It offers four helpful goodies titled Take It For A Spin, Find Your Way Around, Get Your Bearings, and Become a Lightning Experience Pro. How does storyboarding help to visualize a user engagement story? It is a low tech, quick way to visualize a user engagement story for yourself and for sharing with others. What is the best way to store tips for users? The Guidance Center is a great way to store tips on using critical features, getting started guidance and opportunities for deeper learning. What is the best way to tailor content to the user's role or goals? Consider familiarity with the product and industry, motivation level and product complexity and then tailor the help to the user's role of goals or goals. All right, let's go into some questions. You know, let's end on a high note, right? Like, can we get 100, please? What is, what's the aha moment? The moment that you remember that no, the moment that the user knows no, the moment that a user know, the moment that a user first recognizes value in your product or solution, the moment that a user can complete a complex task in Salesforce. It's when they first recognize the value. What's the difference between the message and the purpose? The purpose is what you say to the user. The message is why you say it. I think that's probably the opposite. The message is more important than the purpose. The message is what you say to the user. The purpose is why you say it. C, do the same thing. The message is a tone of the guidance. The purpose is the business value. And we end on a hundred. Huh. That was super duper fun today. Do you know we went through, I think like 150 flashcards today and took at least 10 different tests. That is what we talk about in terms of like efficiency. Now, of course we didn't do super well on all the tests because a lot of them were quite confusing, but when we take a look at how we're doing, we can see where's all of our stuff. We have 27 badges and almost 13,000 points. That's incredible. Really, really super cool. Hey, free dose with us. All right, well, everyone, super great. Um, I will see everyone tomorrow. Bye, and really, really well done. Seriously, you guys are doing really well. Bye.